Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. That's right. Feedback Friday here. One month, less than one month now, until the NFL Draft, the Purple Daily Draft Party, the third annual at the Fillmore in Minneapolis. And a quick word about that before we dive into Feedback Friday and a couple other shout-outs. So next Wednesday, so this thing sold out. You guys sold it out in 72 hours. It's an amazing audience. And so we've been trying to work with the venue to just put a few extra tickets out for people without it being uncomfortably crowded. So on Wednesday, April 3rd at 10 a.m., we are going to make 20 VIP tickets available, 10 pair, at scorenorth.com slash party. It's a very small amount, obviously. Uh, they're $100 a piece, but you get food and drink vouchers. You get a Score North beanie, a meet and greet with the show. Scorenorth.com slash party, 10 a.m. Central Time, Wednesday, April 3rd, will be the last stash of tickets, gentlemen. That's going to be awesome. So a couple day- days ago, Don says, can I ask you a question? Which I'm like, oh, my God, that's not this a good thing. When, yeah. when you hear that from the wife. I'm, I'm, but, you know, I played it cool. I'm extremely calm. I said, sure, what? She said, so the people that pay to go to, to this thing, are they paying that, that much just to meet you three guys? <laughs> and I said, honey, no. They get vouchers. They get other. They get goodies. This is going to be great. I think she was going to rip us. Like, I, I think if I said, oh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a meet and greet. Yeah. And she's like... <laughs> Can they sit down somewhere? Yes, the VIP is 100%, 100%. I know, I know, but I was like, and I don't think she wants to go. I think she just thought, why would anybody pay to see you three clowns? It's a great it's a great question. But that's not all they get, because Popcorn is giving everyone in see? attendance a purple daily flag. All VIPs will also relieve a, uh, will receive a popcorn sample bag. So popcorn in the house. But yeah, it is. It's a justifiable question from. Just, I was going to say, what do you mean? Yeah. Getting to meet us? I mean, She's you're just going to be ha- happy. You to married have the house me. Empty. <laughs> you married me. You live with me. You think people wouldn't just give, you know, I mean, hey, what's going on? Hello, I'm Judd. <laughs> We're going to have another level of VIP where Judd just does like a Judd uh, solo stage Hello. act for you guys, his Judd act. So let's get to the Feedback Friday questions and comments. You can always hit us up through the Score North app. There's a feedback tab, and that's the easiest way to just send us an email. And John Anderson says, I haven't caught up on all the episodes, but maybe I've missed something. But here is an interesting tidbit. Apparently during his pro day yesterday, Michael Penix had a quote about how I ain't no bum. Jim Miller and Pat Kerwin from Sirius XM's Moving the Chains. I, I used to, to listen to that show actually. all yes, the time. And, and you just did the perfect Pat Kerwin. Moving the chains. <laughs> Pat Kerwin hates the media. That's my favorite part. Moving the chains. These guys don't know what they're talking about. I used to listen when Adam Shine used to do the pregame Adam show on Sunday. Shine. Let's go to let's let's go to Angelo in Philadelphia. Talk about the <laughs> Eagles and the Giants. Adam Shine. Anyways, John Anderson says. The guys on Sirius XM have been saying how good Michael Penix is since the Senior Bowl. And they say anybody that gets him will get themselves a really good quarterback. I know you guys have gone back and forth about pretty much everyone. But the uh, the crew on Sirius XM does not see the hype on J.J. McCarthy. They did say if you compared Penix and all of his measurables to the other candidates, he would be the best quarterback. I haven't heard these guys. I'll, ta- I'll take your word for it yeah. here, John. But... Um, yeah, what are your? I guess what are your thoughts on the? It feels like two months ago, McCarthy and Penix were kind of tied at the hip in terms of mock drafts and evaluation. Yep. And now that the process has played out, no games have been played, but like the process has played out, and there seems to be a wide gap between those two guys. So I, I love this question because I do think that it, it's no secret that like Bo Nix, I don't know on like I I wouldn't personally I don't he might go in the first round I don't know that I I would take him in the first round but i feel like that it's guilt by association now and so like penix has sort of been forgotten and it feels like he's slipped back to the bo nix tier while mccarthy has clearly jetted up to the first tier this is a great point michael penix now i'm am, am i certain about a thing no two torn acls 
concern me. But in his pro day yesterday, he ran a sub 4 6 40. Um, he didn't rush for a lot of lar- yards last year at Washington, which scared teams. He, he had uh, eight yards on 35 attempts in, in 15 games. But the dude has a cannon for an arm. Uh, he has 67 touchdowns over the past two years, which is the fourth wow. most in the entire country. He is a guy who I think we are probably the most guilty of sleeping on. And and his, if this word is the correct word to use, his variance in the draft to me could be incredible. Like, I don't know what teams think here. It, it feels like McCarthy is solidly in that top four. Like, if McCarthy starts to fall, I will be a bit a bit surprised. Penix, I don't know. But I think this is a very fair point. And I could see a lot of teams slow playing yeah. this and not and and basically liking this regression of Penix's value. Because if you look at, aside from the fact that the injury history has to scare you, right? But if you look at the ability, if you look at the arm, uh, if if you look at his, what, college football playoff semifinal, which was phenomenal. Yep. Yeah, I this one to me has the most leeway of, I won't be surprised if he goes 12th, and I won't be totally shocked if, if he goes at the end of the first round or the start of the second round. Yeah. I'll, I'll read you one more here. Couple, couple, of Michael, because he had a pro day yesterday, so he's top of mind for people. Chris Noss chimes in, says, "Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Oh yeah, brother. Let me tell you something. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you guys exactly what's going to happen. The Vikings aren't going to trade up. They okay. will trade down. Okay. From eleven, they'll trade down into the twenties and get another first rounder next year. So he's saying instead of packaging a bunch of firsts and getting one quarterback." He's saying they're going to trade down from 11 into the 20s, have two picks in the 20s, and have two first-round picks in 2025. Okay. Then they'll draft Michael Penix, whom before the national championship was viewed better than Daniels or May. I don't know if that go that no, far. I don't know if that far. Mm-mm. No, that wasn't the case. Not true. His age is off-putting to me, but why has he been scratched off the board for mock drafts? It's beyond me. If I'm the Vikings, I'm not giving up all of that capital to get up into the top five. Way too much. I'm staying where I'm at, taking Penix, or I'm trading back for a 2025 first-round pick and hopefully getting him anyway. I'll just say, like, here's kind of where I'm at with this. I do think they're going to trade up. I wouldn't be shocked if if they did something totally different. I would say they're probably going to take Drake Mayer, J.J. McCarthy, and if... Kevin O'Connell has made a decision behind the scenes that, yep, those are the two horses that I would ride. I want I want to hitch my career and the future of the Vikings to J.J. McCarthy or Jake May. All right, I'm in. But if the Vikings decided, you know what? It's not worth moving up that high. It's not worth we're We can't move up that high unless we give up a future first-round pick because there's a bidding war. If Kevin O'Connell were to then say, you know what? I love me some Michael Penix. Just ran a 4.4640-yard dash. Yeah, his, his testing and measurables are off the charts. People love his leadership. Lowest sack rate in modern college football history. Like he's a great sack avoiding quarterback. Hunts down the field. If if what if they decided Michael Penix in the teens trade back extra capital defensive player at twenty three, I would not rip them for that. If if KOC said yeah right. I love this On dude Penix, I, I agree with you I ride with Michael Penix yeah if- I would not rip the Vikings for that. As I talked about a couple of days ago, the only guy that I could see who we have questions about, who if KOC if KOC says I ride with Bo, Bo Nix, I'd be like I don't know that I. Can I love ride how with that's. You. I love that you're. That's my drawing. That that's my line. If that, KOC says I ride with Penix, Judd's like yes, yeah, I'll well, follow because you. You know why? Be, but because, you'll fire him if they go Bo Nix. <laughs> well, because Michael Penix has played in college. Uh, Bo Bo Nix again was in a tricked up system, which I don't think coaches good ones fall for. But Michael Penix, I I honestly think the biggest thing here that's um that's suppressing his draft stock is the fact that the guy no matter how he did medically at the combine tore his a- ACL twice, he's had yep. injuries. Like those are things because he's not young for a draft pick and he's been hurt cuz I think statistically and and from a standpoint of his 40 time and from a standpoint of his arm, which is a great arm, I don't think there's a lot of physical attributes he lacks where where you're like, oh, I don't like this. Um, 
he did say that his, and this could be a smokescreen, he did say at his pro day, pre-draft visits, Giants, Falcons, Raiders, Broncos, and Steelers. But we know the Vikings are sneaking in. We know that the Vikings, KOC and Quazy, Dark of Night, Fly In, Lear Jet, Private Wolf Jet, come in and knock on the door of these QBs and sit down with a playbook and stuff. So I don't know that that list means much, Declan. It feels a lot like his stock. It feels exactly or very similar to Teddy Bridgewater in 2014. So Teddy, who was presumed to be the number one overall pick that college football season, and then his stock kind of takes a little bit of a, a dip. He has the weird pro day where he takes off his gloves and he puts back on the gloves. And now all of a sudden he ends up going 32nd overall to the Vikings after they traded back up to get him. Yeah. The Vikings obviously took Anthony Barr in that draft too. And then they still were able to find their future quarterback. And look, I know Teddy's knee exploded and whatnot, but <laughs> at the same time, he was a very good college quarterback who a lot of people thought could go number one in the entire draft at one point. And then his stock takes a dip because of some weird things. And then he actually ends up starting being a full-time starter in 2015 and brings the Vikings to the playoffs. It feels like Penix is on of a similar path where he's probably actually one of the better quarterbacks in the draft, but these weird things are happening behind the scenes or behind perception and smoke screens that are limiting his draft stock. Here's another one from Zachariah Turnage, who was our guest on Write That Down. Zachariah from Wednesday. And I'm going to preface this by asking Judd, how much do you ride with KOC? Because you ride with you ride with him for the top four quarterbacks. Strong. I ride you, pretty strongly. You ride with him for Michael Penix, but then you drew a very clear line in the sand that you do not ride with him if he drafts Bo Nix. That your, your faith in him as a QB evaluator has a limit, and Bo Nix is that limit. I probably, yeah, pretty much. But I still ride with him pretty strongly. I, that, that's a pretty big list of quarterbacks. So here's what Zachariah says. Today I was listening to Ryan Wilson and former Vikings GM Rick Spielman's podcast, and they were discussing Spencer Rattler and his prospects as a potential franchise quarterback. Okay. Spielman listed a handful of teams he thought Spencer Rattler could be a potential franchise quarterback for. One of them was the Vikings. I truly think Spencer Rattler has all the tools to be a franchise quarterback. He'd be a great fit for KOC's offense. So here's some reckless speculation for you. Oh. Reckless speculation. What if the Vikings traded into pick 23 a couple weeks ago to ensure they can get their guy, Spencer Rattler? All the trade-up talk from 11 into the top five is a smokescreen, so no one knows what their true plan is, and that's why KOC and ownership seem to be so excited, talking about how they have a plan. Spencer Rattler. I don't even know this. What is Spencer Rattler's uh, projected round? He's a day two pick, day two, day three. So yeah. second, second, yeah. or, so second third, third round, okay. round, somewhere in there. Yeah, like, like if, if that note had said Penix... At twenty three, I think I would have subscribed to it. And because well, like, yeah, we know you ride with that might be a really you, good point. You ride with KOC up to the Michael Michael Penix exit. Yep, exactly right. But once and, we get and, to the Bo Nix exit Bo Nix, no, or the exactly Spencer right. Rattler exit, you're like, why are we still? We were supposed I to exit. Rec- we were supposed to exit back there. Do I need to hit the uh, the emergency? Where he locks the door. He locks the door. <laughs> he's driving. He's like lock. I'm like, KOC, Where are we going? what are you doing, man? What are you doing? What are you doing, KOC? Don't do anything crazy, KOC. Um. <laughs> I don't like the ultimate end result of that note, but bravo to the reckless speculation. I mean, I want to leave. I guess I want to leave my mind open for crazy (laughs) things happen. Mm -hmm. Is there, and we kind of went over this last Saturday's check down. Is there a scenario where they just, maybe they've already decided we got to build this team, man. We're not trading 2025 first. We're not. We, we got two first round picks right now. This is great. Let's see how the board falls to us. Let's not. We're not. We don't need one of those top four quarterbacks. It's a. It's. We think it's a seven quarterback draft because Spencer Rattler is our seventh. Now. I think you could have kept. I think you could have <laughs> not made the trade with Houston then and just kept your. It yeah, was you, a yeah. second round pick, right? And taken Spencer there. Maybe like Penix, but, maybe, I can but, see, but, wouldn't get to you. That, but they that might I be looking see. and saying that like. It's unlikely. Maybe they're. Hey. I'm just. I'm just throwing this out. Okay. Yeah, Maybe yeah. they don't want to trade up, and they're thinking, hey, we having the 11th pick is a nice little 
catch all safety net if JJ McCarthy or Drake May somehow tumbles, boom, we'll catch him at 11. Awesome. And we get to pick at 23. But if they don't, let's use the 11 to take a defensive player, maybe like the first defensive player off the board well, at 11. Yeah. That and let's be. have 23 can be our safety net for the Penix, Bonix, Spencer Rattler level of quarterback instead instead of 42 being the safety net which is what they used to have right like 23 yeah. is a safer a safer net again i would probably dabble in the jj mccarthy drake may bin before i would be dabbling in the yeah. spencer rattler bin but things get crazy during the draft at 23 if i'm if i'm go going to get funky let's get funky i probably go with the Penix bin at 23 that's all i'm saying but i do appreciate you think he'll be there still the reckless speculation the broncos I what, guy? What, uh, I think the Broncos are going up. I think the Broncos are going to try. So, like, if, if it fell, if, if the Vikings don't trade up, I think the Broncos are up for sure. But what if the Vikings trade up? Then the Broncos trade. I'm saying well, Penix, Penix might go 12th or 13th. He could. Oh, he could. It's crazy. But I think the Broncos are going up. I think the Vikings are going to try. Well, I think the Broncos are going to try to go up. I think the Vikings are going to try to go up. And Raiders are it, going up. Everyone's and as going. you mentioned yesterday, yes, I think uh, the Raiders are going to try and go up for sure. Sandy Bow chimes and says, wow, Judd got a spring haircut, a great spring haircut. Well, this, this is a nice haircut. I'm nice glad haircut. I'm glad that that person likes it because I got home uh -oh. and asked the wife. I said, what do you think? She goes, you know, I don't like you in short hair. Oh, really? I don't know. Oh, she does not like that. my hair short. No, no, she doesn't like I, my li hair short. I like your hair short. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it looks great. I think it looks good. Well, and it gets so it makes you look a little younger. I feel like I, I agree. And it gets mop toppy when it's long. Mop yeah. Happy. Yeah. And plus I can roll I I can wake up at like 9:15 now. Dude, our guy Jason Come right downstairs, flip on the computer. Did a mock up of cuz we were joking about Judd shaving his head a couple weeks ago. Our guy Jason, the chief meme op officer for Purple oh, Daily. This is, this is good. And people are using it as their profile picture right now. People <laughs> somebody, that hate Judd on Twitter. Somebody it's, some twins. Yeah. It's Judd with a shaved head and like kind of a grayed in beard and it looks really good. Yeah, it looks You look like Dave Harbor and like 10 more years yeah <laughs> or him in 10 more years like he looks you look a little look at david harbour i have the opposite effect where when i come home um my fiance does like my haircut but then also i will say she sides with don to a degree where i have this strut about me for a couple days after the haircut the way i look at myself in the mirror hey and guys. she loves to point that out Whoa. Every oh you go fancy Whoa! Yeah, I mean, I look. Yeah, when I, like when I you get I, a little I, pep in your step, when you get your hair cut. You know what? I'm looking in the mirror. I'm getting ready. I I just I'm feeling myself you. a little bit. I look good. good. For, you yeah. know what? You should yeah. do that. Thank you. Finger That's guns great. everywhere. Yeah. Wow. She and or her normal line is, you know, you don't look as good as you think you look, right? And I'm like, yes, I'm. Well aware, honey. Thank you so much for. You know what? That's that no. That's no. 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 You. I like the fact that you have a pep in your step. You pay enough. You know what? I do. I see the pay. price of mine. Yeah, I can't really have a pep in my step because, mm -hmm. but I mean, you're paying. Where do you good go, Joe? Declan goes to like a high end salon, barber shop. Takes out. A I got loan. a guy. Yeah, I, I got dude. a guy down the street. He's fantastic. Twenty. Does it have bucks. one of those I like candy cane looking signs yeah, outside? Yeah. 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 Does it? Does it? <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yes. It just says barber. It's like a boulevard. Barb. <laughs> it's on oh, the. I know. I know. It, <laughs> it's on the corner of I Louisiana. Yeah. And Minnetonka. I know exactly where. Lucky's yeah. my guy. Lucky's fantastic. Lucky. His name is his Lucky. Name is, his name is Lucky. Yeah, okay. he is. Fa he is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> when we were talking about tax CPAs with names like uh, who was your dad's Lenny. Lenny, Lenny, and my guy's Don. Lucky seemed like a guy that cuts hair. Lucky yeah. seemed like a guy. He's, that cuts he's great. Hair. He seemed like a barber. <laughs> He's very meticulous too. Like it's it's a it's an experience. It's good. One one thing I would request if Chief Meme Officer Jason is consuming this podcast right now, if you could mock up Declan with a shaved head oh. and maybe a couple variations of facial hair, maybe no facial hair. I would love to see what that looks like on oh, the internet. I feel like me Just with a shaved there. head and a beard is one of two things, like a mafioso drug de dealer type or a rogue cop. I think I think it's your next phase. I don't think it's gonna happen for a couple more years, but I think it's like it's gonna be your final phase as a talking I feel head, like a, a hot take artist phase. is gonna be shaved head, beard, slinging takes. I feel like a plain clothes policeman who's gone rogue, <laughs> an undercover take artist, yeah. <laughs> just out of nowhere. Trevor chimes in, says, "Hey guys, hope this email finds you well." Just kidding. <laughs> I love when people we joked about that too yeah 
Hope this email finds you well. It does. You're just in the fetal position. Yeah. It did not find me well, Janice. Okay. Anyone had a question? Um, let's see. Anyone had a question? Can't believe I don't know this. Oh, oh, anyhow had a question. I got a draft question. So, for example, let's say the pick with Arizona. You're talking to Arizona. Can Arizona lie and say, well, the Giants are offering this, Vikings, so you better up your price. Are teams allowed to lie about those conversations? Yes. Yeah, they can it's lie poker, about whatever man. they want. Well, like, oh, uh, Reckless speculation Money alert. Do, Dor, uh, is it Dorche Jr. says, Gents, I'm a server at the Capitol Grill in Orlando on the YouTube comments. I took care of Robert Kraft and company. I told him I was a Vikings fan. He personally told me that the Vikings did call the Patriots. Welcome to the Reckless Speculation oh, Lifestyle. We can, con- we can confirm. <laughs> Confirmed right here on confirmed Purple Daily. Heavy.com later today. First of all, <laughs> it's Capitol coming. Grill. That's legit. I could see Bob Kraft, table for six. Couple I'm cocktails. A Vikings fan. Go to the massage parlor after, maybe. Yeah, Bring your oh, friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for some dessert. All Bob Kraft was, was after was a happy ending, and you guys got to mock him. <laughs> I love how he's going to like a strip mall massage place. Like, yeah, dude, no. you're Bob it's Kraft. It's Florida. But... Dude, it's Florida. That's <laughs> all there is, I think. I, I don't know if there's any nice ones in Florida. It's just all strip malls. There's no There's like a bail bonds place next door. There's no Omni Hotel equivalent on the strip mall in (laughs) in in Florida. Uh, But but back to the question from Trevor. Yes, like that is the that's what you have to sort of figure out, right? It's all a big poker game. We want to move up to number four, and the Cardinals are like, "Cool, sounds good." Yeah, we have six other teams that have better offers in right now, Mm -hmm. and you have to figure out: Are they lying? Are they not? Mm -hmm. Do you call their bluff? Exactly. John Robertson says, did you guys happen to catch the LSU coach interview? So Brian Kelly did an interview at Jaden Daniels Pro Day a couple My days family. ago. My family. My family. <laughs> <laughs> and he was asked about Daniels. Did you see this clip or no? I did not. I did not. No. So he said, Jaden Daniels will be making lots of big plays for Washington next year. Seems like he let the cat out of the bag too early. I believe the Vikings will trade 2024 first-round picks and 2025 first-round pick to New England for Drake May. I feel it in my bones. As soon as the Vikes got McCown as the quarterback's coach, I was like, Drake May will be a Minnesota Viking. But, yeah, that that did happen. Brian Kelly was asked about, yeah, yeah, he's, what do you think? And he said he's going to be making a lot of big plays for Washington in the NFL. Now, is he just pumping the value of his guy or does he know that there's already a deal done behind the scenes? And there might be like, it, it's what we expect. Right. So mm-hmm. like, I, I think if, I think while Pelissero mentioned the possibility of the commanders trading th- that pick, I would probably be more surprised by that than anything that might happen subsequently. Yeah. Like if the Patriots, Cardinals or chargers trade, it's It's not going to be a surprise. Washington moves off that pick to take McCarthy. Like, because I, I think what Pelissero was saying, or I think what I read was where it was tied together was Washington should try to move off the two because they want McCarthy and then move back a couple picks and take and take him there. But that would surprise me more. I mean, when you look at D- Daniels' skill set, it's really intriguing. It is. The best version of him is like, a Lamar Jackson with yeah. maybe even better passing prowess. I don't know. So, hey, before we get to a bunch more feedback here, there's some really great questions. If we had the number one pick for all convenience stores and oh. gas stations, who would we pick here at Purple Daily? The Alpha, the best QB out there, the fantastic convenience store. And that, of course, ladies and gentlemen, as you know by now, because they're the presenting sponsor of this show, is our friends at Quick Trip. And in particular, I want to talk to you as we look right there at all of the delicious offerings at Quick Trip about their chicken offerings, fried chicken, chicken tenders, roasted whole chicken. Guess what? Put their chicken mano a mano with any of the competition and you're going to find the Quick Trip has your uh, has your lunch, dinner ready for you. So when you stop in to get some gasoline, because of course there's that quality gasoline guarantee that my friend Declan Goff loves so much, mm-hmm. you're going to go inside and you are going to get the fried bone-in uh, chicken perhaps the roasted whole chicken boneless wings what a great snack oh, while watching on. the games just a glorious sports time right now i mean last night was fantastic tonight again is fantastic boneless wings from quick trip quick trip 
the number one pick, and quite frankly, perhaps the number one, two, and three picks. Forget the rest. Amen. Amen. Also, our friends at Nicolay Law are here as the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. You see those billboards around town. You see Russell Nicolay right now on your YouTube screen, just power suit, power tie, walking around the stadium. And uh, Nicolay Law is very proud to serve their local communities here in the Twin Cities. You might see some of them at the gas station, walking the dog, maybe at your local watering hole. They're just normal folks who happen to have law degrees that can help you when you've suffered an injury. The insurance companies are knocking on your door. They don't care. They're not letting you have some space to figure out your next steps. But Nicolay Law cares, and they have seen every play the insurance companies have to run. And so you're in good hands. You can start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com. Get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay, 1-855-NICOLAY. Were you quoting Vance, Munson, and Hitch with power suit, power tie right yes, there? Yes, I was, Declan. I thought I thought you were just i as we reviewed it before saw it on tv the other night watched it for the thousandth time i will great, always sit and watch great it if it's available on tv every time. great rom-com right there <laughs> okay james rydell says we've all been playing gm a lot these last few weeks but let's try a different exercise if you guys were the wilfs how would you be feeling about your franchise right now what do koc and quasi need to do to earn an extension going into year three of their four-year contracts how would you feel about them and where the organization's at right now? You know, that's um, I don't. I probably don't feel as bad as most. I, I I think this team is set up to perhaps not be a playoff team in 2024. But when you look at the cap space they, they've cleared, um, the decisions they've made after 2022. When when I mean, they won 13 games, so it, it was fun. But I was a little bit perplexed by the whole let's run almost the entire thing back. Um, I think, in fact, I was thinking about this last night. I think if they take a quarter, if they trade up into the top four and take one of those Q- QBs, mm-hmm. um, and I know, I know what I'm going to get back, which is the 2022 draft. Okay. But let's look at the totality. Mm-hmm. I think both of them are going to get contract extensions shortly after the draft this oh. year. Cause just to it, sort of show like, yeah, hey, well, I mean, we're, first we're in of this- all, if it's you not draft a Panther a, situation. Exactly. And if you draft a quarterback, like there's a realistic, this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, but I think if you were to draft a quarterback and the draft goes, in your opinion, well, mm-hmm. uh, I think there's a very good chance. And I think they'll be tied together. Like I like KOC would probably be the first one to get the extension, but I could see uh, Quasi as well. So... Yeah, I, I I really believe that this team is setting itself up to pop in 2025. I really think that. That'd be interesting that they would give it right after the draft, though, because, like, let's say that draft class, this draft class incoming, is 2022-esque, and it's just an abomination, outside maybe, like, of the quarterback that they take. I feel like there'd be just major questions about Kwesi and the way he goes about the entire draft. But major you're not going to know... I think I, I take actually, too long though. I agree with Declan on this front. I think that their extensions would come after the third year. I'd like to I'd like to see all right, make your draft picks. Your by the way, my answer to this question is I love where the organization is right now. Yeah. Even if they're taking maybe a little bit of a step back for long term gain for a 2025 window, they finally got serious about building a Super Bowl winning blueprint when they said goodbye to the checkmate quarterback contract that's been holding them back for six years. So now they've got to make the right moves. It doesn't just because you said goodbye to him doesn't mean that you're guaranteed right. to win a Super Bowl. You got to make the right moves. You got to find the right quarterback of the future and keep building out the roster here. But they've put themselves in a really good position to build up through 2025. So I, I really like where the organization is at right now. Is it enough to say instantly after the draft? All right, let's let's celebrate with a contract extension. I don't know. I probably let's see what happens going into 2024 and play out part of the season. Let's. I don't think there's a rush to sign those guys to new extensions. They're under contract I, for two more yeah, years. Yeah, I just think that if if they if they do trade up and get their QB, that there's going to be an overall commitment to the administration. 
because that's going to take some time and that's a five-year contract. And so I could just, I'm not saying like five-year extensions. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying another like three-year extension that begins after the following season or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that this, I think the way that they're doing this now, I actually don't, don't have a problem with, Mm -hmm. and I believe it's smart and they have ultimately trimmed. I mean, the salary cap space next March is going to be really, really good. And so if you have, if you have optimism coming out of 2024, now you can add veterans, you know, fill your guard. You, you can actually go pay a guard. Things like that. And that's what yeah. I think is going to put totally. you o- over the proverbial top. Speaking of, do you guys see the Dalton Reisner news yesterday? Yes, I did. Fired his agent, hired Drew Rosenhaus. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's about time he does something. Get off Twitter and go do something. I'm, I'm glad he did this for himself. I don't know. Is it the agent's fault or is there something a little off about Dalton well, Reisner? That's, it's weird might that this be. is happening two years in a row. It is. There might be. But, I mean, your agent, like, something has to change. He, he can only change so much right now. And getting a guy, I, I think the important thing, too, is it's nice to have an agent who has other clients on the, the team. I don't know who represented uh, Dalton Reisner previously, but I think Drew has three or four Vikings. And mm-hmm. so at least now you've got a dialogue going back and forth. But, yeah, it is weird. It's weird that the dude was a, a free agent into the regular season. That's yeah. not like the norm at all. Tony Santacano chimes in. That's a great name. Tony I think Santicano. I'm pronouncing that right. Tony Santacano. Great show, as always. Fun time watching you guys after a long day from work. I would like to know if the Purple Daily Draft Party will be uploaded the next day as a podcast or video, and has any other draft party in Purple Daily history been uploaded already online? When one before we die, well, win one before we die, Sports Dad and I are both from the 60s and 70s. So good news, Tony. It will be live the entire night on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. So even if you're not inside the Fillmore, there's going to be a lot more of you watching live on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, 7 o'clock, April 25th, and it's going to be a blast. And we're going to try and translate that through the screen and through the microphones to you. And then the next day, it'll be available later that night, the next morning, uh, the audio podcast version too. And if you want to search through the YouTube channel, we do have the previous two draft parties. One was at Surly Brewing two years ago and then Park Tavern last year. You can find those uh, on the podcast feeds or the YouTube channel. You have to do some searching. But yes, it's not it's not an event just for the people at the Fillmore, just so you know. Yeah, there'll, there'll be some, uh, not recording logistics, but like for the podcast space, we... Well, it'd be very unlikely that I upload like a four and a half hour file for you. So if you're looking for the audio version of that full show from start to finish, that probably will not be on your podcast feed, but you will have probably even multiple moments from at least night one of the draft on your podcast feed. And yes, the, if you want to watch the whole thing for four hours, because why wouldn't you? You can, uh, you can obviously just go on YouTube too. Yeah. Yep. So we're, yeah, we got, we got you guys covered across all the, the platforms. Mike Lopez chimes in. First of all, I want to say I love the show. I've been listening to you guys since 2018, and this is my first time writing in. Mike. Welcome. Welcome in, dude. You can write in anytime you want. And he says, I'm an electrician by trade, and even though I could listen to you during work hours, I save your podcast for my after-work gym sessions. Something about lifting weights while dudes talk football gets me hyped. (laughs) Let's go. There it is. Just Get grinding you. away in the gym. <laughs> Muscle milk. Not now. Not, not now, now chief. chief. I'm in the zone. <laughs> That's the greatest. I wanted to ask about round one and McCarthy. Why do we think New England is going to give up their third overall pick? If the quarterback is the most important position in sports, why would the Patriots even consider anything less than both of our first round picks and Justin Jefferson when they just got rid of Mac Jones and need a quarterback? Also, what's up with all the hype around J.J. McCarthy? He's not even the first overall pick, and that's all anyone is talking about. It seems to me everyone is playing the smokescreen game with J.J. McCarthy, and it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up falling to the bottom of round one like Lamar Jackson did. Oh, wow. Will, so, did Levis fall to the second round last year? Yes. To the Titans? Mm -hmm. Like, like that's the one that does scare me, because it's like everyone, I think, 
a month before the draft? Was it three weeks before the draft? There was talk about he might go number one. He might uh, for sure top five. Yeah. Um, to answer the Patriots question, the Patriots. So, yes, quarterback is the most important position in sports. But it's also one where I don't where if you have like no depth organizationally, and if your if your team is a dumpster fire, uh, you'd be best not to draft one and play one, i.e. the Panthers last year. And I think there's something to be said for if the Patriots could get both of the Vikings first round picks, not Jefferson, because again, the Patriots aren't set to pop now. So do you really want to get, get a guy one when you don't have, as was pointed out, a quarterback and two, who's going to have to be paid a huge amount. So I would want the Vikings 2025 first, which Thor is dead set against. Yeah. But, but now, now you've got three first round picks the 25 who knows like the vikings could struggle a lot that could be the eighth pick um so i totally get the point about the importance of the position but i also think when you are fundamentally depleted to a point where your roster construction is nil there's something to be said for accumulating as many good draft picks as possible to try to get to the point where an impact quarterback can have a positive experience and and can be put into a situation where he can thrive. Real quick, this is all becoming very clear to me. Let's let's believe the Brian Kelly slip at the Jaden Daniels Pro Day that Washington's taking Jaden Daniels. Sure. I think that's that's a really interesting slip. Or maybe it wasn't a slip. Maybe he's just like, who cares? It's right. everyone knows it's happening. Right. Jaden Daniels number two to Washington. The only reason you would trade up to number three is if you love one of the quarterbacks, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, above any of the other ones, right? Correct. Because to get to three, it probably does cost you a 2025 first-round pick. Mm -hmm. Now, we're sort of projecting and wishfully thinking that moving up to number four isn't going to cost you a future first-round pick. I think we've, we assume that well, the, the the tax for bumping the Patriots is that the Patriots need a quarterback. So they're they're going to say, I mean, come on, man. Like, why would we not draft Drake May? We need a little something sweeter, right? So if you love one of those quarterbacks more than any of the others, that would be the only reason to trade up to number three and trade your future first round pick in 2025. Mm -hmm. If you view Drake May and J.J. McCarthy as equal or J and Jaden Daniels, if he's the one that falls then you would trade to the fourth spot because presumably it would cost you maybe one fewer first round pick. Again, we're just projecting that. There might be a bidding war that makes you throw it in. Right. So that's what I can't figure out is like, the only reason to trade to number three is if they think the the gap starts after Drake May and then there's a, there's a canyon of some kind and then J.J. McCarthy is right. the head of the next tier. But then if you think that, do you trade up to four aggressively if you think that there is a canyon? Like, if you think that Tier 1 is really just three guys and they're all gone, do you trade up to four to get the first guy from Tier 2 if they say that we want your 2025 first? Because my my fear is this, especially if the Patriots don't trade that pick. So, like, let's say the Patriots stand pat. And yep. so now the Cardinals have the Broncos on the horn. The Raiders on the horn. The Vikings on the horn. I don't see how you get out of that conversation without the Cardinals saying, hold on a second. We got three or four teams here. We're going to need that 25 first round pick. Yeah, and that then, could absolutely happen. Yeah. But then if there's a canyon there, so like if you like McCarthy, but you loved May, you know, I don't know. Do you give up that 25 first round pick for a guy that you like, but don't love? And do the Vikings put J.J. McCarthy on the same level as Drake May, which is the conversation we're having? Correct. Do they put him in a second tier by himself that's still worth trading up for? Or is Penix? Or is he in a second tier with other quarterbacks that no one's talking about because we have blinders on yep. and we're staring at only four quarterbacks? Yep, yep. This is why the Patriots pick intrigues me a lot, though. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why. And, and I do think the more that you look at, at how he profiles, and McCarthy might be a he might be fantastic. I don't know. But May seems to have the attributes that O'Connell would like the most. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, go ahead, Dex. I was going to say, we uh, we have not breaking news. I wouldn't classify this as breaking oh, not, not news. Not again. But the Vikings did announce some key off-season workout dates. Some key off-season okay. workout dates. Okay. 
First workout date, April 15th. OTAs are May 21st, 20 through the 21st, the 23rd, 28th, and 29th, and May 31st. It's weird built-in off days in those OTAs. It's very strange. Um, also, to. June 10th through the 13th is part of OTAs, and then mandatory mini camp. Mandatory mini camp June 4th through the 6th. I gotta get okay. Calendar out. Hold on a second. Here. Make sure we. June fourth through the sixth. Is this Mandato- like a, that's, that's they mandatory tweet this out or is this in our inboxes somewhere? Uh, I saw it from Alec Lewis. I, mean, I don't think we've gotten the official uh, okay. release from. I got a note that they the were team. coming. The dates were coming, but I hadn't uh, seen. This is how we dates. map out our off-season schedule These here too. Very important yeah, dates. Yeah, yeah. When, when very can important can't wait to take vacation? June. You know? I'm oh, Judd's got now. the big desk calendar there. This is a great desk calendar. I love that is an old. Yeah, my father had one of those. Big my notes. dad loved the the big old school. It was even bigger than that one. He loved the oh old the school I calendar. I don't like the desk pad oh. one. I got to be able to pick it up and crinkle it around. Oh, yeah, do you, do you fold that up and put it in your pocket when you're out and about, or how do you I how do you manage your in, calendar when you're on the <laughs> on the road? It in my backpack. It you, can go in my backpack. Your, you put that in your backpack. Oh, this can go in the backpack. Yeah, you can. But I mean, it's not. I can't fold this up in my pocket. Obviously. You could just use your phone. You, you don't use you know, the count. Phone, yeah. I, you know, why I do that just for reminders on your phone. No, you know why? Because I like to physically look at a calendar at times and see the plan. The this phone, is... you got to sort of scroll through it, and then you got to hit the dates, and then you got to eh, no. That's why I like I'm anti watch. I hate watches. I I, I just I do agree I, with that. I number one, I, I, I look. If I I'm go to a music you. festival, if I'm at a concert, and I'm I have a you. thing on my wrist all night. Yeah. I hate the feeling of something on my. And then wrist. you're going like this. Oh, wait, wait till the first. Oh. Wait for the first at least month of marriage. I'm oh, actually excited ring. to wear the ring. I'm actually. Uh, not... Yeah, but it feels weird. Like oh, I like it feels weird. I don't wear, like the first like month plus. I was always like, That's a, uh, this is weird because I don't wear rings. You're paranoid that it's gonna fall off or something no. too. Well, yeah, that that too. But I'm just saying from a uh, like appendage that it's no, like something it's on dresser your it's, I'm, I'm ready to rock that. Well, no that's, i'm not saying you're not i'm just saying wait till wait till the experience it's just an interesting experience i'm not, I'm not saying, saying you're not i'm not saying i'm not, not saying ready. that no one's saying wants to wear a ring i don't want to wear a ring yeah. okay marissa of the north chimes in and says i understand that you won't read this on the show based on the fact that you only read feedback from men but I wanted to... <laughs> we want women to write us. We want them to show up on the show. What are you talking about, Marissa? I was say, Marissa, we see our analytics. I think 94% of our audience is men. So we what? do we, we do welcome more women to consume yeah. the show, to write in questions. Vent line? We are, we are not, it's not like we've ignored 50 questions from women here on Feedback Friday. Yeah, no, not at all. So Marissa says, I wanted to share with you that your premise from the Saturday Checkdown episode was flawed last week. Well, yes, you probably do have to give up next year's first round pick in order to move up to slot two or three. I believe you could get the fourth ranked quarterback with the fifth pick by trading with Los Angeles, packaging 11 and 23 and a couple of mid round picks maybe in 2025. So there is a middle ground between moving way up, sticking at 11 and 23. There is a there's like a middle ground of cost that it would take to move up. Yeah. The question is, can is five good enough? Right. Can you move up to five, or is someone going to jump you at four? That's what they're trying to figure out, right? Right. So if the McCarthy steam is real, you can't wait till five. Correct. If it's a smoke screen, <laughs> then who knows? It is smoke screen season. It feels, it feels like five. If you trade to five, it feels like a lot of hope, though, right? Because it's a draft night trade. It's not a preordained trade. And now you're like, okay, we got to go to five now to get McCarthy because he fell past well, four. But you would, but I, I think there's so much information being traded behind the scenes. You'll move up to four if if you like Drake May and JJ McCarthy, Wide Canyon Gap, and all the other quarterbacks down here, and you yep. want to make sure you get one of those guys, then you're engaging with Arizona at four. And the only reason that you wouldn't complete that deal is if another team offered like something insane beyond what is reasonable Mm -hmm. or if the Cardinals said we're taking Marvin Harrison jr. We think he's the best player in the draft and we need a wide receiver to pair with, with our guy, Kyler Murray. Okay, cool. And then there's not a quarterback being taken at four, right? Uh, Ann Keen chimes in. First of all, I love Thor's days and all the content you guys are putting out. One humble request. As much as I'm excited about the quarterback prospects, please continue to explore what our defense is going to do. Brian Flores worked magic with an island of misfit toys last year. 
Can we add some love to our defense and what presents what presence the draft may bring? Again, love this most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, it's hard to project because like right now they have they have two picks well, on day one, no picks on day two. Yeah. A bunch of fourth and fifth round picks, and they might yep. only make it's possible they only make one pick before day three, and it's a quarterback, right? And let's not forget as well that this team spent a lot of its free agency available cash on defense. So like they're not mm-hmm. gonna be like like the 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 panic that might have existed if if they hadn't gotten some of their targets would be pretty bad, except for this. You you lost to Neil Hunter, but you got two guys that can rush. Yeah. You got a you got a linebacker in Cashman. So now you're gonna pair him with as we call him IP, because that's gonna give give you more speed there. Your safety position's in good shape already. Um Shaq Griffin might not be great, but I mean o- O'Connell talked um this past week about the fact that that he sees he that they he said they flat out want to play more man so like they didn't play man last year because they basically said we don't have the people to do it and because brian flores is not a dummy he didn't try and force it well they're going to try and play more man now and so in, in their opinion their cornerbacks are in better position byron murphy jr can now move inside so like they my, my opinion of where they're going to go in, in the draft is they're going to say, we already spent a lot of our available resources on defense. Yeah. So I don't necessarily, unless they stay at 11 and a DT falls, and if that happens, God bless them. Uh, but unless that occurs, I think this is seen as, hey, Brian Brian Flores' Christmas came in free agency. Yeah. And now he opened, it's, he opened all of his presents. And now me. it's time for Big Brother O'Connell to open his present below the tree. What do I see there? It's a McCarthy. I think Flores is going to get a stocking stuffer yeah, but like I, a like oh, a he will. Yeah. stocking yeah. stuffer. No question. Yeah. no question, but I'm just saying like like Brian came Ooh, down some cr- socks is great. First day of free agency, he's like a big box. Who's that for? They're like Brian. It's for you. Ooh, it's a mini Rubik's cube. Ooh, my, this is great. And now my O'Connell's sister always like, oh. liked the stockings more than the presents, and I always thought that was so strange. Don likes stockings. I'm not a big stocking guy. Well, you get there's like gift cards. You yeah, know, yeah. you can get. Yeah. Pair but of as a socks, kid, you know. But as a kid, but yeah. As a kid, give me the presents. presents every time. Yeah, you want the presents? I want, and and I mean, the bigger the box, the better. Right, you always go. You start from the biggest and work your way down. Everyone knows that. But I mean, the bigger the box, and and how about this? How about when there's a present and but it's in a closet, like it, it's the a last thing, one. and so you're disappointed. I got a goalie stick, but I didn't get it until the very <laughs> end. And my parents are like, "Oh, oh, hold on a second. Oh, and they went, this? "Oh, was and, there something?" And then had a goalie closet? stick, oh, and oh. no, they didn't hit me with it. They gave it to me. <laughs> that that's one of those things too. Like I think I. I, it's still the same golf bag I have. I got a golf bag and a driver like nine years ago, and you can't really wrap that. You know, like you can put a thing over it, but it's pretty obvious of what is inside of that. And same thing with like a sled. I remember getting a sweet body sled. It's one of my favorite birthday gifts of all time. Nice. And my mom just said, "I'm." It's around the corner, but like I'm not gonna wrap that because it's five feet tall, and there's no point to well, putting a big bag or wrapping paper over it. Yeah. I used to get so excited back in, like, when I was a kid in the mid-late 90s. CDs would always be, because you oh. it was, this is before, like, Napster. Yeah. When, now you can just go find whatever oh, music you I, want. I used to go buy them all the time. There's an era of records and eight yeah. tracks back in the day for cassettes, right? For me, it was CDs yeah. in the 90s. And yeah. To see the, the five different CDs that I would get oh, yeah. for Christmas was always really And that fun. was a big so, spend back then. No mm-hmm. Doubt, Tragic Kingdom or whatever. In the right. '90s, a CD was about what, fifteen bucks? They're probably fifteen, oh, twenty yeah. bucks. They yeah. weren't cheap. Mm-hmm. Tapes were the best because they were cheap. So if if you Next heard a song, quality was crap, and liked it, yeah. But you could go buy, buy the tape, seven ninety nine or so, mm-hmm. and then if the rest of the tape sucked, it's like okay, that's fine. Then you can't like find, but you gotta like fast forward. You can't find tracks, but I'm say- right? But I'm yeah. saying, if if you liked a song and you didn't know the band, and then you went out and bought the cd and the rest of the uh album sucked that was a major spend that's the funny thing now is like artists still they put out albums still but it's 
it's less important. You don't because mm-hmm. before it was like, okay, you're gonna you're gonna put four songs on one side and four That's- on the other and sell it, right? And now it's like. If you just Singles. have a really big single that you I think it's a on. throwback thing though now, right? Like like it's side like A side B. Yeah. Well, and we got an album out and then like the old school yeah. guys like me who have, you know, turntable still, they go and buy the album, but they don't need to. Well, you also need enough songs to play a venue, right? You can't just like mm-hmm. put out a oh, song sure. and you got to you got to have like well, you know what songs you can do just you can play, play the song again and again and again. I've seen it done before. <laughs> Uh, Tom Hinkle chimes in and says, hey, now that Score North and Purple Daily are very popular, wildly, massively popular. Yes, Huge in Europe, you, I hear. Yes. Uh, do you three gentlemen get recognized in public and feel like you have to stop and talk sports with everyone? I love Purple Daily. Love the Monday banter between you and Judd on the quarterback draft speculation. Um, yeah, how much now that, I mean, we used to do radio for a long time. And, you know, people don't, like, know what you look like when you're doing radio. Do you guys, is it hard to be in public for you guys? You're just signing autographs, people's body parts. Is it is it a burden now for you? It's not a burden. Not it's just much, it's though. so. I stay home. Yeah, Judd Judd. Does it's it, really so. hard to navigate. His, you, go to the, his, you go to the grocery store and yeah. 19 people come walking up to the sports dad his wanting barber, sports advice. Lucky the barber, I don't think, maybe doesn't tune into Purple Daily. I was going to say, I don't think he knows about he, the show, and yeah. I assure as hell don't Don tell the him. tax guy tune into Purple Daily? Uh, Don doesn't tune in, but he is fascinated by the sports media business. Just fascinated by everything about it. He asked me probably a thousand questions, and honestly, I'm fine with that. I'm I'm okay with answering. But how popular are you? You you get recognized in restaurants sometimes, right? Yeah, I, I would. It happened a ton in North Loop when I was first dating Kelsey. It happened like on our first three or four dates. And the, her line is, I thought you were Joey Tribbiani and you were like paying the people like he did in Friends to come up and say, oh, my God, are you Joey? Are you Declan Goff? Whatever. Um, but, yeah, definitely it, in the last few years, it's kind of hilarious. But I always stop. Like I go to the, I went to a Wolves game with a buddy and I got stopped like three times in the like upper level concourse. And though there's some deep score North fans in the 200 level yeah. at the uh, concourse at Target. It's Center. it's fun, man. Like I, I would say, yeah, I love anyone who I think. For a long time, there were some times where we're doing AM sports radio and we're wondering, is anyone out there? Does anyone care? <laughs> so it is fun to to talk sports with people if you're a listener of the show. And we sort of feel like, you know, we sit here in our little studios or whatever and we're talking to a screen and there's a bunch of you out there that we're, we're all like sort of part of each other's daily lives. And it's fun to break down that wall when we're out and about and uh, and meet people in person and, and talk sports. There's been a couple of hilarious instances. Like I was in a TSA line at MSP airport a few months back and I can't remember the guy's name, but he was the TSA agent checking people's IDs and he's going through his job, you know, just kind of it's early in the morning, whatever. And, and I start walking up and he kind of like, he kind of perks up and he's like, Hey, and I was like, uh, am I getting arrested? <laughs> I'm in the TSA line. What's happening? Worst possible place. I just now. listened to Purple Daily on the way over here. Oh, my gosh. And then he goes, I still need to see your ID, though, because it is a TSA line. <laughs> right. But, yeah, it's it's super fun just connecting with people and and uh, talking Vikings, talking whatever, talking smack, talking wrestling. Talking wrestling. Talk wrestling in public. Do love me some talking wrestling, yep. Uh, Jordan says, hey, Phil, before I die is something that many fans of the purple will live and die by. But for some, including myself, it means just a bit more. I spent many weekends in my youth hunting at my grandparents' farm, and those weekends were almost always capped off with a Vikings game. My grandfather, aware that there were children present, would often mumble obscenities to himself to vent the frustration that the team was undoubtedly causing him. Good on Grandpa. <laughs> son of a son of a piece of, of, son of a Christmas story you're out of sassafrasa it was from him that I first heard the mantra before I die had cancer not taken him in 2006 the sight of Brett Favre in purple surely would have a few years later now <laughs> it is a mantra that my father and I both live by when the day comes and it will I will drop everything to witness the Vikings hoisting the Lombardi trophy with my father Unrelated, I spent several I spend several hours of every morning completely alone as a general manager of a southern Minnesota Jimmy John's. Scornorth entertains me greatly. I would like to officially submit my application to become the chief sandwich supplier for the Purple Daily oh, Leadership Cabinet. Absolutely. Thanks for the amazing content. Yeah, Jordan, You're welcome in. to the Purple Daily Leadership You're Cabinet, in. man. 
the not the non bread uh, wraps oh, yeah. now are on which. Re- yeah, those are great. On witches. On the witches lettuce? are fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. just the, the lettuce, lettuce wrap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those right are now. fantastic. Mm-hmm. I had no yeah. idea. A little messy, you know, a little, little wet, little, little hard so, to kind of hold together. By the end, you're just like holding the meat and a tomato mayo. in your hand. That, that, that's, yes. that's kind of the trick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Easy mayo yeah. if yep. you want mayo, yep. but easy mayo. If, and I don't if, mind you know. their bread, but it's pretty rich. Oh, it's great bread. And there's awesome a lot bread. of bread. So, mm-hmm. so like if you don't want the bread, that's a really good alternative. Uh, if you take the gut, you know, cause sometimes they but give you right. the guts of the bread and they're in your sandwich on top of it. Use it as French toast. Oh, interesting. It's incredible. It's hmm. amazing French toast. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, Herbert and Gerberts will do that. Herbert and Gerberts does soup. that. Yeah. The guts. Dip, right? The, the guts. Get get the soup. Get the sandwich and soup and the guts. That's so good. And you yeah. dip those guts in the soup. Oh, that's good. It's so good. It sounds, the way you just put it sounds yeah, the way, really yeah, I don't know if I want too. anymore. Yeah, really yeah. good. Really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt Weiss says, on draft night, do teams, we have a couple more here left. If you haven't already, click the like button and the subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, please, too, as we power our way toward 50,000 subscribers. On draft night, do teams have to be honest? Oh, we already kind of answered a question like this. Do teams have to be honest or genuine about their hearing? It seems like Drake May is perhaps falling and would be great if he would fall to 11, but I can't help but think this won't happen. Somebody probably jumps up and takes him, but if the Chargers are on the clock and the Broncos are calling for the pick, what would they have to tell the Vikings? What would the like? Would the Chargers be honest? No, they're all they're all leveraging for it's subterfuge for more picks. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the poker game here. Well, man. plus like, you don't know, like you don't have definitive. It's not like like you, it's an active negotiation till it's done, right? Yeah. So like like you're trying to yeah you're trying to hustle teams. Yeah, it's teams are lying. Teams are it's subterfuge. It's smoke screens, and you have to figure out who's bluffing, who's not. It's, a, it's an art form. And then Steve Barbie chimes in and says, with news of WrestleMania almost certainly coming to U.S. Bank oh. Stadium in 2025. Oh, my God. Let's go. Don't get too ahead of yourself, you I, guys, I, until it's official. Dude. How many times have we gone down this well, path? So, Judge Eight. Sean, Sean yep. Ross Sapp, who's like the woge of WWE. Yeah. Just breaking it. He breaks down all the news. He's incredibly yep. plugged in. He... Uh, put out a newsletter that basically said, like, yes, they're the favorite, but they have to be careful yep. because they've gotten burned before. L- and Lester. I'm, and we'll figure out about it like a week from today is when we'll probably figure out. Mr. Bagley. And God, this is my soup. This is my Super Bowl times well, 10. Then, but don't talk about it. Don't think about it until it's done. Because what, what Phil, eight years back, 10 years back, it's been a long time. It was like when one, the stadium was new. It was yep. like yes. yeah, seven or eight years ago. And Bagley was really talking longer. about, hey, here's what we're going to get. Yeah. Final four, Super Bowl. Everything came true except for one thing. WrestleMania. Yep. yep. And, and I guarantee you it was supposed to have been here by now, Declan. Oh, so don't, 100%. It's a hotbed. I mean, this is, you think about the history of wrestlers who are from here. And oh, absolutely. The AWA, excuse yep. me. Uh, so the question from Steve is, will you be attending? Yes. 100%. And will we get more wrestling content on Score North from Declan and Phil? Love the interview with Xavier Woods. Well, we never turned down when, whenever, like, we Chris Jericho came on a couple years ago. Xavier Natalia. Woods, Natalia came on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Rallis, who's no longer with WWE, former Gopher player. But we definitely, on the Score North YouTube channel and the Mackie and Judd podcast, anytime we're offered... A wrestler, we're definitely in on it. Well, if but... it's here too, right? Like you guys would have to do some type of podcast. Oh, oh yeah. man, there's a there's like a media. It's like a radio row kind yeah. of yeah. Radio you row. Can... Yeah, I feel it would be thing. necessary. You'll it, be there too. We will it be is. With yeah, you're you. Actually, I'll be on my couch. No, no, you're you're avoiding coming with people. This. You're, it's a blast, you're, dude. You're coming along you with this. It what are you is... talking about? Oh, uh, I've I wasn't really able to do the final. Uh, excuse me, the Super Bowl stuff. Uh, I was laid off about a, two months before that happened, so I didn't really get to experience all the Super Bowl media madness. Mm, but I was, was able to do Final great. Four stuff pretty and great. WrestleMania stuff. Is going to be, yeah, that's going to be a Super Bowl Kirk Christmas Shake Shack. times a hundred for me. Oh, I can't wait! Can't wait. You'll just yeah, you see John Cena lifting lifting weights in the Skyway. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That's a wrap on Feedback Friday here. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment, where we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. See you guys.